Oh my gosh, are we dead? Are we dead? We're so dead. We're dead. We're dead. He's holding the door open, waiting for you. The room is dark. Is this, uh, this looks like the basement. He needs a therapist. I'm sure he knows exactly the right questions to ask. Welcome back to my masquerader. Hi, if you're new here, my name is Para, your host, and today we're going to be playing Dr. Morgan Counseling Session 1.0. Guess what, guys? We're back to another Yandarine game. Yes, it is. <laughs> this is what you guys want, okay? I see the analytics. I see what's happening. I should totally like make like a little jingle for this Yandarine series now. My psycho dates. If you want to go check that up in the little eye thing below, then I'll put it there. But this yandering thing has gotten out of control. So anyway, let's just go into it. Dr. Morgan's counseling session. Let's just start the masquerade. There's four endings, so let's get them all. Next. You snap out of your daze. All right. Counseling. Oh, wait, he's my counselor? That's not going to go well. You step forward to the receptionist, wallet in one hand. A plastic insurance card lies between your index and thumb as you dart your eyes around, avoiding eye contact. Name. What is your name? Uh, host para. What is so weird? My counselor called me host para. See, that's what you get for asking me my name. You should have just. It's your your mistake. Host para. Uh, checking in. You say hesitantly as you slide the card out and slide it across the counter. The receptionist lets out a huff, or is it a sigh, and takes the card. The keyboard clicked loudly as they typed your information. In your hands, get your debit card ready for the copay. The copay. Is that supposed to be copy or copay? You rehearse the words you'd say when asked for payment, the exact movements you'd make, the pin number you'd type after, and... All right, you're all checked in. What? You look up as your insurance card is handed back to you. You fumble with your wallet as you put your insurance card back into its slot. You nervously shuffle your feet, waiting for the receptionist to ask you for you to pay for your visit, but... They'll call you when they're ready. Is there anything else I can help you with? Despite the words... They're not even turned towards you, sorting through files instead. Ah, uh, no, it's nothing. You duck your head down and turn to find a seat in the waiting area with your debit card still pinched between your fingers. Why hadn't they asked you to pay like always? A pit began to form in your stomach as you sat down. Fidgeting with your debit card, you ultimately decided to put it away and pocket your wallet. I mean, it's entirely possible that your insurance just covered the visit in its entirety, right? Okay, question. What do we need therapy for? Our therapist, counselor, whatever, Morgan, Dr. Morgan, uh, he definitely paid for a visit because, you know, you've been visiting over here for a year. He probably already grown a session with you. I'm thinking he's actually Yandarine and not a serial killer like those other ones that we were playing. However, despite a frequent visitor here for over a year, this had never happened. Not once. The time went by as you rested your hands on your knees, taking in the details of the ceiling. After a restless silence, the door to the offices opened. Host. Para. That's me! That's me right here, host Para! Your girl! The voice is unfamiliar, causing you to hesitate for a moment. That isn't... my counselor. It isn't! Oh, so you weren't actually meeting Dr. Morgan, he was just stalking from the other room, I see. You look around nervously, your gaze falling on the receptionist from earlier. They catch your eye and raise an eyebrow before going back to their paperwork. Help me, receptionist! Help me! Anxiety starts to gnaw at you as you tighten your grip on your knees. I'm getting a bad feeling about this. Okay, so I'm guessing the first ending is us just leaving, right? Grab a host's para's hand. Come on, we're getting, we're getting out of here. Me and you, me and you. This is way too much. You decide to leave and reschedule your counseling session. Getting up, you walk through the doors to the parking lot. Are we gonna die in the parking lot? You can't shake the feeling of being watched as you unlock your car. Goosebumps rise along your nape of your neck once you lock your car. Do you lock the doors before leaving? Was someone waiting for you in the back to kill you? Paranoia gets the better of you and you check the back seats, just in case. Oh my gosh, are we dead? Are we dead? We're so dead. We're dead. We're dead. Nothing's there. Of course there's nothing there. You locked the doors when you left your car. No one could have gotten in without smashing a window or something. You start the engine and begin to drive out of the parking lot. As you pass by the entrance of the office, you spot a man smiling at you in the window. A chill runs down your spine. He smiles as he watches you leave. You quickly look away, focusing on driving. Creepy! Your grip on the driving wheel tightens. You feel sick. The pit of your stomach had only grown, anxiety and paranoia clawing at your insides, wanting to escape. You could feel bile rising in your throat, but you kept it in. It seems your counseling will have to wait another day. Ending one, reschedule your appointment, people. This is what I'm talking about. If you get bad vibes and your bullshit sentences are tingling in the pit of your stomach, okay, I want you to be safe. Look at me, turn around, leave. Boom, 
See? Perfect. Already saved host para. Oh, I have to choose my name again? Cool. It's still gonna be host para. I'm not gonna misspell it. Frick you. <laughs> I'm not gonna put an A. I can spell. Host para. You here? That's me! The door opens a little wider. You get up and walk over, entering the office. Yes! I am... Um, I'm here. Oh, he's so simply drawn! Cute. Wow, I love those pink tips all dyed. Jeez Louise, my dude. What is your hair doing? I don't know, I like it. You're greeted by a man with blonde hair and lively brown eyes. Actually, wait, should we name him? Should we like, not name him something else? So should we, should we give him a different accent? I feel like every Yandere boy that we've played, we've always given like the same accent. Oh, splendid, right this way. Oh yes, much better. I love a British man. Absolutely, oh goodness, why is that corridor so horrifying? What the heck? He leads you down the hallway. It is uncomfortably long walk with a couple of turns and down some stairs. You had no idea the office building was so big. You never had to venture this far in before. The man walked with a brisk pace, occasionally looking over his shoulder with a smile to make sure you were keeping up. I'm coming, I'm coming, jeez louise. His pace as well as the distance you were walking started to tire you out a bit, so he slowed down and walked next to you. How are you today? The question made you jump a bit. I'm okay. You weren't sure of the answer yourself. He picked up your tone, nodding. The silence that settled between you two felt awkward. Cool! Eventually, both stopped at a door. The unfamiliar man took out some keys and fumbled through them, looking for the right key to unlock the door. You took this time to look at the door. Strangely enough, it didn't have a nameplate like all the others. It was blank where the name should be, as if the writing had been recently rubbed or cleaned off. Ah, here we go. His voice snaps you out of your observations. He's holding the door open, waiting for you. The room is dark. Uh, you first, you first. The pit of your stomach grows, anxiety gnawing as you step into the room. The light withdraws as he closes the door. Okay. The air is cold, sending a chill down your spine as you squint to try and make sense of your surroundings. Oh, <laughs> I forgot to turn the lights on. How silly of me. How silly of you indeed, sir. Turn on these damn lights right now. You act like you can see in the dark, you freaking demon. He says with a feather light laugh. His voice echoes around the room. Suddenly, light floods the room. What the frick? Yeah, you got that right, Hulse Para. What the hell? This, this, uh, this looks like the basement. The room was almost entirely empty, save for a plastic table and some metal chairs. Concrete walls and pillars surrounded you, metal pipes running along the ceiling. You were definitely underground somewhere. This was most certainly not your counselor's office. Before you could say anything, the man walks in front of you, fidgeting slightly. He seemed a bit embarrassed. A slight blush dusted his cheeks as he shyly avoided eye contact. I forgot how Yandereens acted. I've been calling all these other ones Yandereens. Oh, this is a Yandereen. Act shy before me, peasant, and I shall treat you with good things like head pads. Sorry, my budget isn't big enough for, to furnish my office, he says sheeply, guiding you to the table. Your budget is the least of my worries right now. Wait, sorry. Um, this isn't my... You say, stepping away from the man. He gives you a puzzled look before smiling again. Oh! <laughs> oh my goodness, I didn't even introduce myself yet. I am Oliver Morgan, 26 years old. Though, since you're my patient, that will be Dr. Morgan. Morgan is just fine, though, he says, reaching out to shake your hand. You pull away, holding your hand close to you. No, that's not what I was going to say. You aren't my usual therapist. I think there was a mistake. I have to go. A smile falls from his face, though his eyes still have a glint in them. Uh-oh. You turn your back on him and towards the door. You begin to turn the handle, except... What? You jiggle the handle. Again and again. It doesn't turn. Why isn't it... Is this locked? Did you lock the door? Of course he locked the door, dummy. What are you, gonna leave it open? I wouldn't leave the door open if I was gonna kidnap somebody. Sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, sir, sir, sir. Calm down. You're a bit, you're a bit close there. You turn around to look at him. Morgan is uncomfortably close, standing two or three feet away, leaning forward. His face was a few inches away from yours as he boxed you in with one of his arms. A calm smile was still pastured on his face, though it seemed like his expression was starting to falter. Calm down, calm down. Host para. Come on, just take a seat and we can... He reaches for you again. Uh, punch his lights out. Whoa, I can do that? Are you sure? There's no way, right? Freaking main characters in like every Enderine game is like weak as freak. Can I really punch his lights out? Do it! You push him away before winding your arm back and sucker punched him right in the face. Morgan falls to the floor with a thud. Well, that was easy. 
Kneeling down, what, what the frick did I need therapy for? Being an ex-mafia member? That was freaking amazing! You get, you get paraclaps. Congratulations. That's the first time I've seen anyone actually do something in this whole damn series besides that lady who stabbed that guy with the knife in the last one. That doesn't count because she like, she didn't even knock him out. He, she just like stabbed him and, it, and even then it was just like a flesh wound. Kneeling down, you shove your hand into his pockets, grabbing the keys. Turning back towards the door, you go through the keys and try them one by one. Oh, he's not sleeping, is he? He's not sleeping. With each passing moment, you can feel your heart rate pick up. Just kick him again! Kick him in the head so he has a freaking con concussion or something! Why are you- why are you turning your back to him? Why are there so many damn keys? The one you want is the one with the blue rhinestones. Oh, thanks! Ah, sh- Oh, Aww. His face! Wait, what? You turn around and Morgan is standing up, rubbing the side of his head. Ah, uh, that hurt. I didn't think you could punch so hard, he mummers before smiling at you. You put the keys between your fingers as a sort of key and knuckle weapon. Morgan stares at you, tilting his head. Let, let me go. Let me leave. You can't stop your voice from shaking. Morgan takes a step forward. You lunge at him, aiming for his stomach. He grabs your arm with ease, yanking you down. The momentum sends you hurtling to the door. You groan, trying to straighten yourself up. The grip you had on your keys loosened, the keys sitting loosely in your palm now. Morgan kneels down, taking the keys off your hand and putting them back into his pocket. Now then, where were we? He says with a smile. You sit up, looking at him, fearfully and disoriented. Morgan reaches a hand out for you to take. Left with no other option, you take his hand. He helps you stand up and steady yourself, his other hand hovering on the small of your back. Morgan gently takes your hand and leads you to the table. Seating you in an uncomfortable metal chair. You know what? He's so kind about it. I'm getting like, like, what a sweetheart. Oh, these freaking douchebag serial killers. Like, what a sweetheart. Yes. Hold up. Thank you very much for Wait kidnapping me and putting me in a room and, oh. Yeah, actually, now that I put into perspective, not really. He sits across from you. A small clipboard and files sit on the side of his table. I'm just glad he, like, he didn't get angry after I sucker punched him and like knocked his lights out, you know? I mean, sure, I had the IQ of a child and didn't decide to knock him out again before I could escape, but I mean, I love that she did it anyway. Morgan takes a second to grab something from under his seat and rubs it on his face. When he turns to face you again, the injury you left him with is mostly gone. Did he put makeup on? You nervously stared at him as he organized the table. Morgan notices your stare and blushes a little before coughing and grabbing a file. So... Anxiety, huh? He says, flipping through the file. Ah, is that it? Was he seriously going to try to be your counselor? Is this guy even licensed? Absolutely! He needs a therapist. I'm sure he knows exactly the right questions to ask. So, tell me about it. What makes you so anxious? You give him an incredulous look. What's making me anxious is that there's a guy pretending to be my counselor and not letting me leave. Morgan just smiles and sets down the folder, clasping his hands together. I can see that you're hesitant to trust me, he began, carefully choosing his words. But all I want is what's best for you. I want to help you, host Para. His tone is earnest as he speaks. You grit your teeth, crossing your arms and frowning your brows to try to seem intimidating. How can I trust you? I don't even know who you are. I come here expecting my usual counselor, and then you show up, lead me into, what even is this, a, a parking garage? It's my office, he corrects you. Yeah, your office that's under the building and surrounded by concrete walls. I told you, they didn't give me much of a budget, he mumbles. Whatever this place is, you bring me in here and lock the door like a maniac. Morgan frowns a little bit, playing with the edge of the paper on the clipboard. Looks like he had nothing to say to that. What's even on the file you have, you ask, reaching out. Morgan pulls the file away, holding it out of reach. No, no, that's mine. You can't have that. That's for the counselor only. Keep your eyes off. It's your information. I'm your counselor now, so... Accept Morgan as your new counselor. Refuses help. I mean, I want to see if he can do his job. I'm going to accept him for now. I want to see I want to see how a yandering person can counsel someone. I'm actually kind of curious. You sigh, letting your arms fall to your sides. You're too tired to argue anymore. You know what? Sure. You're my counselor for the day. Morgan's face immediately lights up your words, his smile returning. I'm so glad you've accepted me. That makes me really happy. Host Para, did he have to say in such a creepy way? Morgan clears his throat, his gaze suddenly serious despite his smile. Well, let's begin, shall we? He says, leaning forward a little. What's been bothering you, Host Para? You gulp. You still felt a little hesitant to tell this stranger your problems. It had taken you a while to truly open to your usual counselor as well, 
Hopefully Morgan won't be too upset if you end up calming up. Clamming up. Uh, well... Wait a minute, you're not gonna tell me why? A sigh escapes you as you lean back into your chair. You had explained the surface issue of your anxiety. Morgan had listened intently, occasionally jolting down notes and offering surprisingly insightful advice every now and then. See? Oh my gosh, he's actually being a really good counselor. He was truly kind and understanding. It was like he knew you for a long time. Yeah, stalking you, you mean. Actually, now that you think about it, had you seen him somewhere before? Um... Dr. Morgan, you began, but his mumbling cuts you off. I see, so that's how it is, he murmurs, his eyes scanning the notes he took. You shifted uncomfortably in your seat as he took a moment to read over his papers. Even though he was caring and helpful, this was as much as you were willing to tell him for now. Hmm, it feels like there's still some things you're keeping from me, but... Hmm. But, but? Your hands nervously play with the hum of your clothes as he speaks. Hmm. It looks like our time is up, he says, standing up. Huh? What? Did you want to talk more? His voice is playful as he pushes the chair in. Uh, no, no, that's not what I meant. I... You stumble over words as he walks over, holding a hand out to you. You take his hand and Morgan helps you up, his hand ghosting over your lower back as he walks you out of the room. You know what? Holy crap, what a gentleman. He's better than any real normal man in this world. Just don't kidnap or stalk people and then you're cool, Morgan. You know, if you just like drop everything else and you just like stick to the fundamentals of your gentlemanship, you can really win someone over, okay? I'm your counselor, remember? He reminds you as he guides you up the stairs and down the hallways. I'm always here if you need to talk. R right Yeah. I guess you are, you mumble, the carpet pattern suddenly more interesting than looking at Morgan's face. Wait, does that mean I'll be seeing you again? I love how we just like totally forgot I sucker punched this man in the face. You can feel Morgan's eyes on you, his laugh echoing down the hall as the two of you walked. Of course. Duh, silly, what are you, what are you gonna do? Not see your counselor again? He will find you. He will always find you. <laughs> a silence fell on the two of you, the gears in your head turning. You had a lot of questions. However, when you opened your mouth to ask about something, Morgan had opened the door to the receptionist area. You look back at him, and he simply smiles. Wait, but I have some questions. See you soon, host para. Y yeah See you soon, Dr. Morgan. You set up a follow-up session with the receptionist before leaving. As you walk to your car, you can feel eyes boring into the back of your head. You can't shake the feeling of being watched as you unlock your car and get in. Wait, is it still the same? Nothing's there. Yeah. That wasn't so bad, I guess, but... I never got the chance to ask what happened to my usual counselor. Oh, he's dead. Oh, he's dead for sure. She, her, whoever your last counselor was, dead. Hmm? Ha, huh, I forgot about you. Looks like you're finally awake. I briefly considered removing the gag from the counselor's mouth before backing away. It's truly a shame that you don't carry your office keys with you, good sir. I had to bring host para to this dingy parking garage that I set up last minute. Oh well. Kneeling down in front of the counselor, I tied the plastic bag I held over his head. Oh no. Well then, it should take a while for you to suffocate to death. Why don't I go over what I learned today while we wait? Taking a seat in the mental chair, I flipped through the notes I took during the counseling session. Ah, host para. I can't wait to see you again. He sounds a bit Australian to me. Have I lost my British voice? What is happening? Ending two. See you next time. Wow, that was, I don't know if I liked it or I didn't like it. I was just so glad that nobody was actually like trying to stab me or getting pissed off hell. Like he, he was such a calming soul for now. But I like that he was such a gentleman. All right, ending two. Interesting, where he seems to be going in order. Okay, stay still. Morgan gently takes your hand and leads you to the table, setting you in an uncomfortable metal chair. Oh, okay. Still same sweet boy, sure. Refuses help. Like hell you are. Give me it! You stand up and try to grab the file again. You catch the edge of the file, pulling it towards you. The contents come loose and spill onto the table. Pictures of you scatter on the table. I freaking knew there were pictures. And it's like a whole freaking Wikipedia of host para in there. There are small Polaroids, each labeled with a date and a description of the face or expression you were making. What? What? What the hell? What the hell is all this, you say, picking one up? You look at Morgan, who's staring impassively at you. The glint in his eyes had vanished. Pictures of you, obviously. Ah, but don't touch them so carelessly, he adds, reaching into his pocket. You back away fearfully, dropping the photo. Morgan simply takes out a pair of gloves, slipping them on. Ah, oh, he's so careful about it, too. What a perfectionist. He picks the photos up carefully, organizing them and placing them back into the file. 
Once they were back where they belonged, Morgan sighed, running a gloved hand through his hair. Looks like I'll have to go with Plan B, he says, reaching under his seat. P plan B? Oh no, it's freaking like one of those, like, ch 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 sleepy gas. The chest tightened with anxiety as he backed away from the table. Yep, honestly, we could have done this easy way, but... <sighs> what a shame. Morgan walks around the edge of the table, fastening a mask to his face. A cloth hangs out of his pocket. Oh, it's that sleepy thing. Now then, hold still, will you? He says, taking the cloth in one hand before lunging for you. He's on top of you in an instant, your hand gripping his wrist, keeping the cloth away from your face. A slight sweet smell wafted towards you. You can't read Morgan's expression, but his eyes darken at your resistance. He wasn't expecting you to struggle this much. Managing to push him off, you crawl towards the door to try to get away from Morgan. A hand grips your ankle, yanking you backwards. Let me go, you shriek, kicking him in the face as hard as you can. Morgan lets out a grunt when you kick him, but his grip remains tight as he drops his full weight on your back, pinning you down. Shush, he whispers, pressing the cloth to your nose and mouth. Shush, 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 you're coming with me, okay? You try to hold your breath, thrashing and struggling to get him off you, but it's futile. Eventually, it feels like your lungs will burst. You inhale the sweet scent on the cloth, feeling a slight headache and dizziness as sleep overtakes you. Oh, well. Ending four, you need more counseling. What the? Wait a minute. Ending four? How? How am I going to get ending three? Ah, okay, okay, wait, I have an idea, I have an idea. So I punched him, and now I'm going to refuse his help. Ugh, my head hurts, he groans quietly. Yep, this is different. Okay, okay, okay. So I just have to knock him and the, just freaking, like, sucker punch him and then say no, and then he's already, like, weakened. He looks tired. You could probably knock him out this time. Morgan lets out a grunt when you kick him square in the face, his grip on your ankle loosening. You quickly pull away and stand up. Not wasting his chance, you tackle him to the floor, grabbing the cloth and shoving it under his mask. He shoves you off of him, standing up and ripping the mask off. Morgan seems dazed as he staggers, holding himself up with the table. Whatever he put on his face earlier wore off, exposing his injuries. Ugh. That seriously... hurt, he mumbled before collapsing. Hopefully for good this time. You approach him, checking to make sure he was actually knocked out this time. Morgan was definitely knocked out. Run for it! Grabbing the keys, you find the key with the blue rhinestone and unlock the door. You run out, finding the exit as fast as you could. You run past the receptionist who gives you a questioning look as you leave. Call 991, you freaking receptionist! Quickly spotting your car, you unlock it and jump in, making sure to lock the door. Turning the engine on, you grip the steering wheel tightly as you speed out of the parking lot and away from the office. Should've just killed them. Ending 3, Escaped Counseling. Wow, I mean, I love how all these people, like, get away, but, like, they never actually have had the thought of, like, either calling 991, knocking them out more, maybe tying them up, then maybe, like, calling the police or something and telling them they're stalking you. They just, like, run away, and then they expect Dr. Morgan to not find her again. Like, he knows where you live! Anyway, that was Dr. Morgan's counseling session. Thank you guys for coming to today's masquerade. I upload every Wednesday. But if you guys want to see the video where I played my first Yandarin game, then click right here. Bye!